الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبت في الله as is known between the youth of Ahl al-Sunnah is the importance of knowledge, the importance of علم and that knowledge and wisdom and wisdom comes with with age and with experience that these beautiful esteemed traits are the traits of those people who traverse the path of Jannah of paradise and then in order to deal with the fitna that comes between Ahlus Sunnah and the fitna of people speaking without knowledge the ilaj for that is fearing Allah and gaining knowledge and trusting and seeking knowledge from Ahlul Ilm not just from any people who are du'ad not just any people who are supposedly students of knowledge and even some students of knowledge but any time that you're seeking knowledge from people of fitna I'm talking about people who cause who spend all of their time causing fitna causing discord between people discord between Ahlul Sunnah discord and trouble and trials and fitna that your end result is that you're going to know more about fitna than you're going to know about your religion so I thought it would be appropriate that we mention bil ikhtisar as quick as we can some beautiful principles our Sheikh Sheikh Saleh Suhaimi Hafidh Allah Ta'ala mentions in his uh, his book in his new book uh, entitled Tanbi Dhul Al Afham Ila Rab Al Sadr Wal Wa'im Ala Minhaj Al Salaf Al Kiram. And so some of these kawa'id are very appropriate for us because we have many people who are new Muslims and they jump into the fire of fitna. They want to know what's your position about this masjid. What's your position about this person? What's your position about this scholar? They don't even have the language to benefit from that scholar or refute that scholar. And they want to know every detail about every aspect of fitna, but maybe their prayer is not together. Maybe they can't read Surah Al-Fatiha properly. This is a masiba a ma from the masaib that has been going on for quite some time because we have not been doing our jobs in teaching the people their Islam, to teaching them, and knowing Islam ourselves, and how to practice it properly, and how to set the example for the people. And going back to the importance of knowledge that I said, which extinguishes this fitna, and is the path of paradise. We go to the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who said, Man yurid Allah bi khayran fi deen. Whenever Allah wants good for a person, He gives him understanding of the religion. And then in another hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu said, مَنْ سَلَقَ تَرِيكًا يَلْتَلْمَسُهُ بِعِلْمٍ سَحْلَ اللَّهُ لَهُ تَرِيكًا لَلْجَنَّةً Whoever traverses the path of knowledge, Allah will make easy for him the path of paradise. So all of those, both of those hadith, show us the importance of knowledge, that knowledge is the way that is going to raise you in the dunya and in the hereafter. And that طَالَبِ الْعِلْمِ is طَالَبِ الْجَنَّةً as the Salaf used to say. So that's why it's important to gain knowledge before you take such harsh positions about so-and-so and such-and-such and so-and-so such so -and -so place. Not to involve yourself uh, in, in making an empty hand and making tests in the people and you don't even have the knowledge, you don't have the tools and you shouldn't even be speaking about those issues. Let's listen to our, our Sheikh, what some of the benefits that he mentioned that helps as a, as a, to clarify what is the Dawah of Ahl Sunnah, what is the Salafi Dawah? He says, first, ليس معنى سلفية والانتساب إليها أن لا يقع السلفي في أخطاء سواء كان طالب العلم صغير أو كان عالم كبير ورسول صلى الله عليه وسلم said كل ابن آدم خطأ وخير خطائين توابهم The Sheikh first said to let us know that it does not mean سلف this is not the meaning of سلفية and adhering to the path of Salafiyyah, meaning the Minhaj, and the Creed, the Aqidah, that every Salafi, or that a Salafi, will not fall into an error, not fall into a mistake. You have to know and understand that. And then he said, regardless of whether it's a small student of knowledge, or it's in great alam, so don't you 
think for a minute that even the greatest ulama have not fallen into error, and that have not, and that have uh, are free from mistakes, because Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Who kunu ibn Adam khata wa khaira khataina tawabu." All the children of Adam make mistakes, and the best of those who sin or make mistakes is those who, who repent. Letting us know all the children of Adam, the small student of knowledge, the da'i, masjid so-and-so that has this conference, masjid so-and-so has that conference, they all make mistakes. But the best of those who repent are those who, uh, most of those who make those mistakes, who make those sins, is those who repent. So that's what we all look for, even the Ashari, even the Sufi, that they can repent from what they're upon and be on the Sunnah. Likewise, the one who's on the Minhaj and Dawah to Ahl Sunnah his whole life or her life can fall into disbelief in the end of the life and go to the hellfire forever, wa'iyadin billah. And that we can find in the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ when he said, When the Ahad kun li amla ahl jannah, the Prophet ﷺ said, One of you will do the deeds of paradise until what is between them in paradise is an arm span's length. And then what was written will overtake them, overtake them, and they will do the deeds of the fire and fall into it. So that lets us know we should be scared. Never take the path and think that you're guided. Think that your group of brothers and sisters are guided. Just you. If they say, how many Salafis in your city? Oh, us three. This is a major mistake. And, cu and could the person who says this could fall into making tiskiyat the nafs, which is also a sin. To say that they are, you know, with pride, that they're guided and others are not guided. So be careful, be humble. Salafiyah should teach you humbleness. And we're going to just, instead of going into Arabic, because I know this will take too long, we'll just mention just a few of these principles, just a few to gain benefit. One of the things he said, And then he mentions a lot of fawaid, but I'm just going to take that qaida real quick and just mention it very briefly. So he said, it's also very important for us to know that every mistake that uh, a person does, meaning a person from Ahl Sunnah or other than Ahl Sunnah, uh, especially this is emphasized in the, a, a person from Ahl Sunnah, that we treat that person like they're from Ahl Bidah. For example, a person, I always get asked, didn't so and so, let's take the example that's well known about me, my position with Sheikh Ibrahim Rahim. He's my Sheikh, one of my Mashaikh. And many of my, some of my other Mashaikh, they refute him. Some of my other Mashaikh, Call him a Mubtadiya. I don't share that opinion. Neither do many ulama like Sheikh, like Alama Ibn uh, 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 Sheikh Abdul Masil al Abad, Sheikh Salih Suhaimi, Alama Sheikh Salih Suhaimi, like Sheikh Kathir, Sheikh Suleiman Rahini, and Kathir, Kathir, Sheikh Falah Ismail, Kathir, Kathir. The point being a habit of Allah. For example, this uh, thing, whatever mistakes the sheikh has, those other ulama, those major scholars, it's not because they, they don't understand or they don't they make this mistake in minhaj. These are many mashaykh of Ahl Sunnah that have 40, 50, 60 years on the minhaj and know the minhaj better than you, you and I will ever know. But they don't see tibdi of him. So why would it be the case that people who are not even students of knowledge, people who are ignorant of the Arabic language, would busy themselves with these kind of questions and these kind of things. Oh, brother, uh, let me send you another YouTube video of what the brothers over here in this English-speaking country said about Sheikh Ibrahim Rahili. Oh, they said this, they said this. Oh, they just made a khutbah, but I don't care because I listen to what these major mountains of knowledge and I go to the sources of those who criticize them. And alhamd, I have enough of the tools to where I can at least kind of distinguish and, and have, a, have some choice in the matter in looking, to be able to look at the issue. But what about people who don't have those tools and then they're busy in these issues? Talking about, oh, Masjid so-and-so hosted Sheikh Ibrahim Rahili and they show, show, there was only one Salafi Mashaykh, Sheikh there. I just heard this recently about one of the Masajid in, in the UK that has hosted many ulama of Ahl Sunnah, Marufin. 
but this particular individual doesn't know Arabic, doesn't know much about Tawheed, makes mistakes in their Salat, and I know this personally, is going to ask about, what, what's your position about this masjid? Uh, I heard that there was only one Shaykh uh, of Sunnah that was there. This, uh, this is so, so strange to me. This is so strange how this issue is still going on when how many ulama come in ulama'ina have already spoken about this? How many of our ulama have already spoken about this and dealt with this garbage? But people are still, because they're ignorant and they're not focused on the most important thing, learn your tawheed, learn your salat, learn how to pay zakat, learn the basics of your religion and don't extend yourself beyond that. Yes, if people you trust warn you against it, okay, don't, don't go there. But don't Busy your lisan, your tongue with these with these issues, because you're gonna likely to fall into sin and likely to be blind following something which may lead you astray. So beware of this. And beware of speaking about the especially the mistakes of the ulama and, and going into those issues. Another benefit, Alama Saleh Suhaimi said, Hafidullah Ta'ala, he said, Laysa ma'ana salafiya and la yaqa salafi fi amrada qulu min shahwat al khafi. So he said it's also not from Salafi. It's not from the Salafi Minhaj. That a Salafi can not perhaps fall into some issues in their heart, have a sickness in their heart. Any of us, how many Salafis that it have proper Minhaj bi'idnillah, proper creed, inshallah ta'ala. And they commit zina, they drink wine, they do this, they do major sins. Okay, this happens, yes. Or that maybe this could be a person of knowledge, a person who's trustworthy in knowledge, but desires overtake them in this particular issue. It becomes personal. They're refuting so-and-so because it's a personal thing of their own nafs. Arrogance overtakes them. May Allah, may Allah protect us from this because it's going to happen to any of us. Sometimes you see that brothers... And sometimes even between scholars, that one scholar defends himself and it becomes a thing of arrogance instead of either admitting his mistake or even maybe he doesn't have a mistake but the other sheikh or the other person of knowledge and it becomes a thing of shakhsiyah, it becomes arrogance. And we've heard this from our ulama, from our major scholars who've mentioned about certain fitna that's happened between ulama and say it's, it's an issue shakhsiyah. You know, it's a, it's a personal issue that it, it's gotten out of control or it's, you know, some desires have creeped in. This can happen. So don't think this can happen. And this is what our sheikh said. He said, so the, the, the shahwa, khafiya, some light uh, 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 desires could have overtaken them. Or they could have love for being popular and being propped up. Or they could have a type of uh, 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 arrogance or whatever towards their brothers. So this can happen. This can happen to the Muslim. And then he said, and that the Muslim is the mirror for his brother Muslim. So he should advise him. Wallahum sta'an. May Allah help us. Another benefit the Shaykh mentioned. I'm just taking some of the benefits because this book is packed full of good. Be nice one day to, for someone to translate it. He said, Laysa bi minhaj as-salaf as-sa'ri al-ilzam bi ittiba qawla ahad. This is what I, I think I'm going to stop after this. Bi-idnillah. Because this is one of the most important things and it relates to our topic. He said, it is not from the minhaj itself. Again, it is not from the minhaj of the salaf. Three times, it is not from the minhaj of the salaf. Laysa min minhaj as-salaf as-sa'ri ilzam bi ittiba qawla ahad. Illa rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam khasa fi masahil al-ijtihadiyya. He said, it is not from the minhaj of the Salaf, Salaf Asadi, the righteous, pious predecessors, to force someone to follow the opinion of anyone except the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, meaning you only follow the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam totally blind without question, especially in an issue of ijtihad, an issue of jurisprudent uh, striving to uh, to to find, to arrive at a hukum, at a ruling. So, meaning it's an issue where maybe there's no clear text and a lot of issues, like a, we have a lot of issues that are contemporary issues that we deal with now, or 
issues that, you know, of course you're not going to be able to look in the Qur'an, in the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Minhaj of the Salaf and say, oh, this masjid and this masjid, they're having beef between each other, so this masjid is off it and we have the Qur'an and the Sunnah to prove it. No, you only have the Qur'an and the Sunnah to prove it if they are falling into characteristics which are backed up by Nasus. And so a lot of these issues become issues of ijtihad, of this student of knowledge, or this da'i, or this alam, this scholar, who has these issues of ijtihad. So going back to what the sheikh said, he said it's not from the minhaj of the Salaf al to force the people to take uh, a particular uh, view. So this is what I want to impart in my brothers and sisters, especially those people who are either new to Islam or who are not students of knowledge, even to students of knowledge, that you can't go around forcing people to take your view. I have a view, a Sheikh Ibrahim Rahili, even if I have, you know, that I believe he's a Sheikh of Ahlul Sunnah. And I believe that he may, he, he's made some mistakes, as we all make mistakes. But I believe those mistakes have not taken him from the Sunnah. I would not force that on somebody I was teaching or somebody I interacted with who says, no, I think he's a mubtadiya. But if the person was continually speaking ill and uh, trying to belittle the sheikh, I might correct them or, or have a, a, a discussion with them. Otherwise, they're entitled to their view, and I don't have to force them to take my view. Likewise, it should be the other way around, but some of our brothers and sisters don't see it that way. But our sheikh, Sheikh Salih Suhaimi, backs it up, and as many Kethra, the Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah has some very clear statements about this in his Mijmu'a Fatawa that you can't, it's not for the, for the uh, mudaris, for the, for the, for the ustad, for the, for the teacher to force his students to take his oath. And that's very important. Imam Malik said that he was teaching the Haram and he said that, that ev he said Everyone mistakes, everyone's mistakes, or everyone can be refuted. Everyone can be refuted. Except Sahiba Hadha Qabr. Except the inhabitant of that grave. Meaning, everyone, they, they might be correct and they might be incorrect to some, some issues. And this goes for with even ulama of Ahl Sunnah. It doesn't mean every, we don't say Sheikh Salih Suhaimi, everything he said. Is, is correct. Every single detail, he's never made a mistake. La, we don't say that. We don't say that about Sheikh Rabi. We don't say that about Sheikh Ubaid ibn Abdullah Jabri. We don't say that about Sheikh Alama Abdul Masin al Abad. We don't say that about Sheikh Salih bin Fazan and, and bigger than them. We don't say that about Imam Muqbil. We don't say that about Imam bin Bas. And we don't say that about Imam al Albani or Imam bin Uthimin, Rahimullah Jami'an, or Imam uh, 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 Sheikh Muhammad Aman Jami. We don't say that. Nor do we say that then. Those bigger, we don't say that about Imam Ibn al Qayyum, Shaykh al Islam Ibn Taymiyyah, him. We don't say that because everyone can make a mistake. And the Mazan, the, the, the way we judge these mistakes is by you having knowledge if you're going to make these judgments and if you're going to make uh, uh, you know, these kind of rulings. And that ru those rulings and those judgments are based on the Quran and the Sunnah and the understanding of the Salaf of the Sunnah. And that means with that understanding that you know. The views, that means if there's an issue, perhaps there's, you, you can't take one athar of the salaf and leave the other athar. That's why it takes ilm, and it takes honesty when we look at these messiah, when we look at these issues. And we ask Allah the Almighty to forgive us of our many sins, and bless our brothers and sisters to not be wasting their time and confuse our youth. Our youth are confused. They're the ones living daily and fighting and hating one another, often on the same minhaj, and boycotting beneficial knowledge because they're confused, they don't know. And we ask that Allah guides them and makes it easy for them. Because now with the internet, it's even worse than when we were coming. When we were coming up, it was very clear when we became introduced to the Salafi minhaj. It was very clear for us compared to the fitna we face now, amazingly enough. Although there was tons of fitna then. But the fitna now we face is there's so much information with knowledge. There's good knowledge and there's kethrata, there's a lot of bad knowledge. Whereas in our time, there might have been less good knowledge because we didn't have the access either to the ulama and the common people, even though some of our students weren't as grounded as that and they, what they brought back is what the people just accepted. So if they brought back some hezbiyah, the people went on the path of hezbiyah. If they brought back some sunnah, the people took that aspect of the sunnah. 
So we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan.